What's up guys? Welcome back to a little citizen sleeper. We're gonna pick up where we left off. Um just the volume here a little bit. Okay. Um I need to eat, so let's do that first. Make sure that I keep enough money. Shaka. Alright, I have some ones, which means I should probably get some data. Toots. Do. Let me check this one. Do. Here's a one. Awesome. That's all I can do. I'm not going to make this in time. Yikes. Okay. I didn't make it, so... Let's see what happens. Am I fucked, fucked? Hold it there, sleeper. Comes a voice from behind you. Don't you run. Cynical bounty hunter. Stay still. Good, good. A hand pats your coat down. You know your master's voice. He spins you around. He's wearing a wide smirk and a slick jacket, and you immediately know he is terrible. You got all the way out here and then stayed put, and he laughs a cool laugh. That's, that's a sleeper thing? My first. You barely hear him. You notice the handgun he has leveled at your chest, and it's hard to take your eyes off it. He reaches down with his other hand and slips some kind of ring out from a belt loop without taking his eyes off you, making it to the eye, though. That's pretty good. This place isn't so bad. Bars, marks, and people. I pull most of my contracts out of asteroid caves or off of godforsaken weapons. Splits the ring into two perfect circles. It's hard to hit civilization when there's so much space to pass through. Who are you? Just a freelancer on contract. He reaches over to slide the rings around your wrists. Go easy. Uh... He's got a pistol on me. We'll let him. Good. You've got the idea, he grins. It's over. Ethan nudges you to start walking. The ship and home, he whistles, going easy. You stumble down the corridor, he hands behind you. Find reasons. We can work this out, can we? I don't see much in the way of assets in your possession. Ethan yawns and continues to nudge you down the corridor. Shame to come all the way out here. 
Just to head back to Ace and Arp right away. The tracker of yours makes this too quick. I was hoping you'd put up a bit more of a chase, you know, a running battle to Bright Market maybe, or a holdout in the lower end. There's a few establishments I would have enjoyed checking out while I asked around. Walk on and silence for a little longer, desperately trying to think of a way to escape. The Eastern Arp tracker would be the death of you. Hey, I have an idea, he then interrupts. Thoughts? How about on the way back to the ship, we stop for a drink? I'm buying, he laughs at his own joke. I have a better idea. Better not be one of those where you do a dramatic pause and then try to jump me, because I'm pretty tired of that. Although amuses Ethan, I've got myself thinking, what's the rush here? Here we are in one of the most lawless joints in the circuit systems, and we're heading to the exit he pauses and try to trudge on in silence. Okay, here's the idea Ethan starts. You and me, we make a little agreement. Here, here are the terms. He turns you to face him. You run or leave or try to abandon the eye, I shoot you. You plot or scheme, try, try to kill me, I shoot you. But, he smiles. Come meet me at an establishment of my choice every few cycles, and you pay me, pay my tab. I don't shoot you. Pauses. You don't pay my tab. He rattles his handgun. You get the idea. I get it. Okay then. That sounds to me like a deal. He stretches. You know, I really thought I was going to have to kill you, but this is so much better. He clicks something on his belt and ring releases from your wrist. So I'm going to see if I can find my old stool at the compressor club. Come see me there. He aims the handgun at you, squinting down the sight. Let me just remind you, that body of yours is one big tracker, so don't even think about leaving the eye. I'll know. Ethan turns and strides off down the corridor, slipping his handgun away. The mix of relief and terror you feel is over. What are you going to do? I'm going to pay his fucking tab. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> what choice do I have? Okay. Well, I'm not quite busted yet. Pay Ethan's tab. Alright. You see Ethan at a distance shouting from the bar for more drinks. This bill isn't going to be small, is it? <laughs> I think not. I guess I better make some money. Um, let's try to get some data first. Because if I can disable the tracker... I'll be in a much better situation. A glimmer in the dark catches your eyes. The orb of the hunter's head appears in the distance. It is looking for you. Hide. You slip down to the ghostly structure of the eye, a feeling like passing through a cloud and their data structures deform and reform around you. Another glimmer clutches your eye closer now. The roving orb, whether in tentacle flickers, jumps once, twice, and then is here. Hunter is here. Entity, submit to inquire. Inquiry. Hunter reaches for you in the unpleasant way your way. It's waving bits, creating a cage. Struggle. You push against the threads as they close in, become frenzied as you push them aside. You are caught by whipping tendrils and feel them blow away the anchor, the anchor of your body. You push through, clearing the threads. Entity ultra processing comes from comes the screen from behind, but you are already gliding away. Back to your anchor, your body. You're awake, dizzy, disoriented, but safe. Ooh, that thing is whooping my ass. that my shittier dice be used for that. Let's go to Feng's Bay and turn in this one. See if I can't disable my tracker. <clears throat> As you enter the bay, Feng is nowhere to be seen. The banks of service machines are thinking on the dark and staccato to the unseeing eyes of the station's digital ghosts. Shitheads. Feng's voice echoes from behind a stack, followed by the hammer of a fist on a metal casing. These sneaky... These snaky shitheads. Who's snaky? Sleeper! Feng's smiling head pops out behind a stack. Just the emulated consciousness I have been eager to see. Come back here. You pick your way between thumbing stacks, trying not to trip on the loose bundles of cables that blanket the dark floor. <clears throat> Feng is sat in front of a set of monitors mounted to a stack. Tell me, Sleeper, what do you see here? Feng waves at a monitor to its side, glowing with pale lists of information. 
You lean in closer, looking for the links in the data. The table seemed to be filled with personal information, names, gender, dates, ID numbers, all the markers of institutional records. Uh, people. People, yes, but whose people? Average. Ah, not quite. He taps on the terminal. I pulled these from the old data you brought in, all employees of the eye's original soul him. But he leans past you, scrolls the list down. This one, this is a sneaky shithead. He stabs the screen with a finger. The name reads Harden Hurst. Friend of yours? Ben gives you a sideways look. Funny. Funny you should say that, sleeper. He drags a stool out beside him and motions for you to sit. Just so happens to be a Harden Hurst in the Havenhead. Havenage. He waits for your reaction. Are you sure? Well, that's where you might be able to help me. Bing leans back in his chair. Just think about it. Decades ago, Harden worked on this station as a... Bing leans across the monitor. Senior Strategic Operations Executive. Bing raises his eyebrows at you. Our Hayden. Harden was keeping the money coming in for Solheim. He defined priority growth initiatives. By making sure the extractors they contracted out to were hooked into the system that outsourced all the risk and kept the profit. Good old Harden uh, shuttled thousands of Paladin Rush workers into an infrastructure which meant that their cut of the work they did went straight back to Solheim. How do you know this? <clears throat> I grew up here, sleeper. This is my history. I am a child of the collapse. Feng turns back to its screen, staring strings of good flickering by. Before I was born, my parents were, were Solheim contractors. They ate at Solheim canteens, worked in Solheim ships, they breathed Solheim air, and slept in Solheim beds. Big voice's voice rises as he speaks, his hands fists on the terminal edge. And the work that, <clears throat> that paid for that existence, the cycles of hard extraction out in the belt, Solheim took their cut. This was a company town, so to speak, and my parents were just another long line of freelance contractors willing to risk their lives for a shot at anything other than poverty and disposal. This guy, stabbing it hard and once again with his finger, strategized all that, did the, sum, the sums, and then somehow thousands and thousands of cycles later is still going, still here, crawling in the walls like some shithead snake. He survived the revolution. But how? These guys, they were big time. There's a lot of money can get you. A lot of money can get you if you're a company man. Thing relaxes. But how is Harden still kicking? I really don't know. He turns to you with some house, so we're going to find out. Harden is now a big shot in the shipyards. Just a few degrees back around the eye from here. Thing brings up a map of the water eye. Uh, Avenage might be born out of Aaron's revolutionary zeal, but a flat hierarchy is... It is not. Harden happened to float to the top. Bang zooms in on the bar yards. Bang grimaces. The thing is, I don't have access to the systems. The shipyard crew is pretty paranoid and they don't like anyone with systems digging around in their stuff. Plus, we need more than just a name of a Solheim executive with proof. Bang holds up a thumbnail sized drive. That's where the slow creation of mine comes in. I call it a ripper worm. He turns the drive between his fings, fingers. It'll rip through any digital storage and spin out a silken thread of filtered data. This one is set on the scent of Hardenhurst. Hands it over. Getting into the compound might be tricky. Feng puts a hand on your shoulder with you, however. I have a particular knack for remote access. Ugh. Feng grins. If you can extract yourself a haven Havenage cipher from a Havenage agent, they sometimes carry them among their data caches. You can crack open the compound's network and slot the worm in through any open port you never even need to go near the shipyards. So what say you? Yes. I knew it. I knew you'd be happy to catch the snake. And don't worry, once we nail this guy, I'll start work on that tracker of your I haven't forgotten. Big scratch the chin. Anything the worm gets, it'll send back here to me. There's something wrong here, and I aim to get to the right. You leave Fang digging through the data among the wires and machines at the station. As you walk out, you try to imagine the eye as it once was, a vast machine, smooth and strong, directed by people like Hart. A vast Solheim built machine into which thousands of poured from the surrogate system for new life. In the hope of a better future, engineered to line someone else's pocket. I need to burn into a new weapon. Make a part and still alive, still part of this place and wonder. Past and never true. Past. Interesting. Alright, so I got some good dice. Let's check for an agent. There's an agent. Agent. Okay. 
agent left. Uh, wait for you to run up a tab. I just sliced her up. Final piece of the winter light sit in a neat pile waiting for the collection shuttle from Haven and Stragos managed to sell the remaining pieces to the shipyards. A fact that's hard to forget as he has been telling you about it for the past two cycles. All that remains is for Haven to come collect. You look around at the yard transformed from the first arrived and two pair drones split back and forth, no longer buzzing uneven. They are lost in the dark corners and scrap is section sort of the system. You and Dragos have put into place over the past cycles bang off. As you look around, as you look, you notice the glow of the pale light from the office by the entrance to the rundown cab of the building, which houses all the records and spare equipment Dragos must be inside. Get to your feet and walk over to find out when the shipyard's collection will be here. Knock. Sleeper, come in. Soon we'll grow open and walk in. Dragos is sitting at the small metal desk. The shipyards told me they'd be here soon, and they'll hand over the chintz and beer set. He writes something with a stylus on his sleeve. Then shuts it off. Of course, we should talk about a bonus. Uh, he stands and turns to face you, his face placid. Look, I don't know when the next job is coming in, but it should tide you over for now. He opens the to reveal a stack of chits. What's going on here? I said it's a bonus. Take it. Dragos presses the chits into your hand. I'm, I've done well by you, and you return the favor. He straightens up and clears his throat. You realize he's prepared with what he's about to say. These chits are for you to take and do what you will with them. They're for me. They are the last I'm going to give you. Pauses. No more work for a sleeper in this yard. Darn, I'm sorry, but that's it. You stay, in, you stay in the container as long as you need, but the yard is done. He turns away to his terminal. What do you mean? Don't press me, sleeper. This is for your own good. Glassy apertures on headset betray no emotion. You need to stay away, sleeper. He pauses during his words. Trouble is going to follow you here, trust me. What do you know? Dragos kicks at the floor, frustrated with himself. I'm not going to be saying any more sleep, but Dragos suddenly grabs you by the shoulder and drags you out of the office into the yard. He turns you to face a stack of pieces from the winter light, dissected, cut down, totally unrecognizable as a ship. You came through that sleeper. That should have been you, chopped and stacked. His hand trembles on your shoulder. That is what happens here. We cut down broken machines and move on. Well, I didn't cut you down, but I'm sure as hell moving you on. Moving you on before whoever killed that ship out here comes to kill me. Kill you. Kill both of us, he shakes his head. These ships, they didn't get this decommissioned. They didn't break down the dry dock. You think they'd look like that if they did? Someone ended them. That means someone tried to end you, sleeper, and I'm done waiting for them to turn out. At our phone, now it's time. He gives you a shove. Go on, he turns and walks back to the That's it, he shouts, who goes inside. The sound sinks in the air and you leave with your pockets filled with chits and a strangely, strangely hollow feeling in just well oh my god I do have chits chits for days I need um survive toggle tracking now I can buy stabilizer god they're a hundred of pop as you quickly leave the surgery, eager to be away from Dorsh's glare, you notice something around the stabilizer vial clenched tightly in your hand. You open your hand and a thin film marked with holes and sigils unrolls from around the vial. At one end, it's a hard metal strip, a handle. Inspect the handle. The metal handle is worn and pitted, but you can see a set of numbers are printed onto it, 207F, and then scratched into the handle at some later date, lower end. 
the speckled film. Hold the cloudy film up to the light. It's perforated with an ornate pattern of holes. You can make out a word among the markings. Pass key. Is this an entry key for somewhere? The lower end? For a moment, you consider going back to the surgeon to return the key and then quickly think better of it. Did Spine want you to have this? Or is Toshio passing the message? Time to head to the lower end and find out. Nice. Ethan's tab. Lower end. Lower end apartment. The lock clunks open, the metal door swinging inward. Into the dark. As you push the door open, automatic lights flicker on inside the apartment. They reveal yellowing plastic panels, the curved shape of the wall mounted utility units. Industrious of a routine life arranged on every surface. You step inside, clicking the door shut behind you. The amber light of the aging fixture glaze everything with pale orange. Work surfaces hold a variety of objects. Indistinct in the dull lighting, a pale blue light drifts from the doorway at the end of the room. Inspect the surfaces. As much as through the thin layer of dust suggests a recent rare and hurried visit. They trace a path to the water dispenser of the auto wash, then the cabinet still half open. The shelf sits an empty pale case. Uh, across the cramped utility room with its auto wash dispensers, water closet, towards the doorway. Through the doorway is a dark, warm room lit only by the faint glow of the terminal screen. Approach the terminal. You approach where the crackle from somewhere in the dark. Sleeper. Sabine's voice shakily echoes in the apartment. Welcome to my home. I'm sorry, I can't be there. I have had to make alternate arrangements. Your rattling noise is static. I was able to record this message, but I don't dare show dare to show you my face. Something is happening with God again. I no longer trust him. Which becomes distant, slipping behind background noise. I have something to ask of you. I want you to get me out. God again were supposed to hide me, protect me. After everything happened, I was desperate and after that I was tired to care and noise like wave passes me. I'm done with it. now I want to screw the dead. But I need a shirt insurance, something I can hold against them. I have my suspicions, but I can't be sure. I need information that, as you know, you need you need me. Pause. Something clicking in the dark. This isn't a threat. You have to understand my position here. Another pause. I know sleepers. I have been here before. I can help you. But now with Yadigan, Yadigan's a noose around my neck. Get me data. Get me information. Get me something that I can use against Yadigan. Then I can get out and you can get what you need. Please wave the static of the mine's voice. Bring it here to my terminal. I'll go get... I'll get it. When I can. You look around the tiny room and try to imagine somebody living here, working at the desk, sleeping long, completely terminal dark, and cuts the static, filling the room with its white hiss, then silent. Access the terminal. You sit in front of the humming terminal and hit a few keys. Spine has left an access port open, but the rest is encrypted, locked away behind Pascal. Spine might not trust you at the moment. They want you to think. Who does Sabine need to hide from, and what debt do they owe to Yadigan? Try to assemble the pieces, but too many are missing. The only thing you know is that without stabilizer, your body will die. You glance at the briefcase lab on the desk. The glass work in the dark. You turn away and leave, the door clunking shut behind you. Back in the corridor, you notice the scrawled graffiti of a blade on the opposite wall. Got again. You feel yourself being drawn into something you don't quite understand. Okay. Yadigan open empty, waiting for the next batch of Yadigan data. Okay, so I need data. It's mine out. Extract the past. Pack an agent for cipher. Emphasis loves two things. Stories and supply with both. You can hear his stories. Well, I do need... Trader. 
Ship mines can be built from scratch, but if you have enough salvage fragments can be reassembled with the fabricator. Interesting. Okay. Let's go home in the cycle. I don't need a stabilizer again. Let's go try to get the data. Here's the agent. Oh, I need a two. Rick. Two. Both the two. Rick. Okay. What about the Yadigan agent? I can get some of these. Cycles where I have to pay his tab. So, I guess I'll keep working on this. Hey you, wanna earn a chip? Kita stands beside a huge pile of tied together whole plate. She stretches out her back or shoulder, bulging with white suit. Make it two. This goddamn station. She sighs and pitches the bridge of her nose. Alright, come here then. Across the docking concourse as she begins to uh, split the plating into two bundles. What is it with this plate? She asks and she ain't gonna flash it and split together the cut. She straightens up to an imposing height, her arm plates creaking. Up and down, or is it? Just think. You all think I'm an easy mark. We all need to survive. I get it, I do. She shakes her head. But if you could just go just one cycle without some jumped up grifter trying to take me for an idiot, then that would be nice. Hoist one bundle of plating onto her shoulder. Come on, then. Enough chat. Gotta earn those chits. 
You struggle to shoulder the plates, but you do even eventually. Gives you a look, shifts this way, and she sets off down the entrance speed as you catch up. Uh, she turns down a passage, pushing through a small crowd of steam doers. Where are you? Why are you doing this yourself? I mean, why aren't I hiring those good folk? Now it's back at the steam doers. I've paid Haven enough. They're currently rinsing me for a mooring. I can't make it unless I either fix up the universe or sell it off as scrap. Nurse, is that your ship? Catch on fast. She gives you another one. She rapidly turns to the corner. She trail behind. She got cut up pretty bad on her last job, and I have to moor moor up here for a spell. But since then, it's only gotten worse. Someone got in and sliced the core from our ship mine. But now she's gone dark. She shifts the panel on her shoulder. The upshot is that I've I'm short one ship mine with a ton of repairs to do, and the rest of the crew signed off for the moment they got wind I'd be stranded. So yeah, it's been a time. Anything I can do to help? I don't know. Got a ship mine tucked away in that frame of yours for a moment. You aren't sure if she's serious. Swings the plates from her back, almost knocking it across his face. She hauls a second bundle on her shoulder. You're the first person I met here who might actually be considered helpful. She pauses, chewing her bottle up. Look, want to help? Come see. Come see me. I need a hand putting Amber back together, and you don't seem the type to try anything stupid. She passes the bundles and plates to the neighbor's outer lock and then turns back. Just don't get to go spreading this around. There's you a couple of chits. She gives you a parting nod, ducks to the door. All right, get out of here. She calls back and locks the door. Okay, so. Get a drink. You're unsure if your frame can metabolize alcohol, but this fungal drink fermented along with Greenway seems like a good test. Buy rations. Keep some expired saw and rations beyond the bar for those weary spacers who ask why the overlook doesn't serve food. Uh me a ration then. You know what? And a drink. Yeah yeah. going on here. Build Mangles Beach to get open. Why why the heavy security for a decaying dock? Unseal the dock while well, I think I can. Inside the sealed dock, pulsing light grabbed your attention among the discarded tubing and rusted plates of machine flickers in the warm glow. First, the machine. As you get closer, you recognize the machine's blocky shape settled into an al alcove in the side of the dock. A kind of upright cabinet. It is covered in faded logos and messages from which you assume it was once an industrial vendor intended to dispense and manufacture ship fittings and other mechanical parts necessary for the regular running of freight and resource extraction vessels. <clears throat> Manufacturer is listed as Neovend. Did you remember an ad advent from long ago squeezed among all the off-road recruitment drives that assaulted every planet board citizen which tripped singling the name over and over? You wipe a layer of dust from the cracked screen, the contractors squeezed by their own corporate employers to pay for every bit of minor maintenance on their rented ship. To your registration. Chips a pre-recorded message. Catching you off guard. Press some keys. You reach the keypad and something begins whirling. At first it sounds like a server motor starting up, but it quickly becomes a whisper, a whining, then a multi-tonal voice that emanates from the event. Entity, they uh, speak with me. Who's there? There's a squeal, almost like some strange mechanical swallowing or intake of breath before the machine speaks again. I, I have need of you. You have need of me. The squeal comes again, and you see that it is the 3D printing apparatus in the upper part of the machine resetting into place, so that each time the servos can be orchestrated to produce that whirring, whining voice. You are in danger. Danger? The machine creaks. You are marked for deletion, entity. Hunter tracks you. The screech rattles through the empty dock. You remember the strange head in the figure. The red clothes again. Hunter? 
The Hunter Protocol. They taste your signature. The sudden wine sets your teeth on edge. You have seen them. This is <clears throat> the gift of an emulated mind. You close your eyes and the skeleton of the station starts. Their emulated minds are adaptable. Their neurons cannot. The mechanism re resets, but emulation makes you a target. Adaptable. Yes, you can move through networks, clouds, hardware, software, and the open minds, but you cannot hide there. Hunter is there. The servos shutter the vending machine's casing as they reset. Hunter searches for me also. Hide in this machine. You look at the ruined vending machine in a usual hiding place for sure. <clears throat> can counter Hunter, but need entity outside machine. The light vickers need you. The screen attached to the vending machine with the swiveling arm comes to life. It displays a flickering map of the station, which leads right at the cloud. Points along the rim in deep red. Hunter is always gathering. Too much data. Must build nests, explains the Neovan. Masters are gone, but continues. Hunt. Bring this data. Raid its nests. Masters. Station builder, Solheim. The machine promised impatiently. Long ago, their protocols still haunt. Uh, bring offerings. Save self, Neovan says pointedly. Mutual need means friends. They conclude, tired of their... Tired of the conversation, the whirring amplifies and then suddenly drops his mechanism with the machine clicked back into place. The glow fades and you are left stood in the dark of the sealed dock, the whirring voice ringing in your ears. Interesting. So, even believes the hunter can post the gather data might hold searching and escaping this Ah, uh, that's not it. Okay. Uh, doesn't look good, but the tension should see it return to a functional state. Fire drones, requires a skill upgrade. Grounded. I'm out of dice, so... Let's go home, end the cycle. Guys, I got upgrades available. Put an upgrade point. Scrap components at home to repair condition. My condition, like. That would be that. Faces. Agent notes give you double data rewards. Keep two dice even when condition is breaking. Reroll all of your dice once per cycle. That's kind of nice. All cryo actions are discounted by 20%. That's also nice, but I appear to be mode at a good one for that one. Reroll all your dice once per cycle is kind of nice. Getting double rewards from agent notes, though. That could be useful. Alright. I'm going to pause the episode here. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like the series, give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.